when you when you know Lady of Soul, when you know Tebogon now, you think of that talkative person. But um, it's funny how when I was small, I was very quiet. Eh? I never used to say a lot, never used to complain a lot. My mom used to say that I'm this child who never used to complain. So like when my sister came, she came as in the one who was um, always complaining, always talking. Not that she's a bad kid, but just saying. So that's where Tebogon comes from, a very quiet uh, girl, but who never thought in, in her life she would... Uh, be in the industry where you have to um, be open and talk a lot and be perceived to be a person who talks a lot when actually you're not generally you're not I have a 10 year old sweetest daughter ever I you know I don't know if it happens to every mother but um, every time I look at this I like calling her a woman even though she's not a woman yet every time I look at this woman I'm like thanking God every day because it's like I see more of myself than anything else I see all those irritating little you know characters about her that if it was me doing that I'll probably say you know don't do that but she doesn't get to see it because she's growing she's a young girl who I, I hope and uh, dream that she grows up to be a much better person than I am hey? a much better person than I am but she's she's okay she's she's what a mother would want in her daughter I think so far so far <sighs> I'll tell you the honest truth. Um, losing somebody in, in, in your life is, is, is not as easy as it may seem or it's not as tough as it may seem. I'm using those two because when it happens to somebody else, you see the depth of it, but you don't feel it. But when it happens to you, you really get to see how important this person was in your life maybe you took them for granted maybe you didn't it's just that it's somebody that you never thought that you'd lose in your lifetime so i would say when you have something good just make sure that you have it and use the time and moment that you have to enjoy it because you never know what might happen to that person or to even you um, the following day or the next hour so when i when i got married to my husband um my late husband which was um we were together for five years and were only married for five months. But even if I sit here, I only I treasure the five years that I spent with him more than the five months because we got to enjoy so much in life. He taught me a lot. He taught me about life, love and laughter. That those are the three important things that you should keep no matter what, no matter how tough it is. Those are the three most important things that you should have in your life. Going through that experience publicly, it was a more of 50 50 I'd say because you know people feel the pain that you're going through but they don't see, they see it they don't feel it and they try by all means to be nothing other than good I guess with whatever that they come out uh, and say to you but there are points where you don't even want to hear that because you know it's not going to be okay you know things are not going to change you know things are, gonna, are not going to be reversed but you know at the end of the day when you sit down you appreciate um, the little that they've tried to do um, to make sure that you know they they show you that they're there for for you because that's more of what I saw with my fans and my family that you might think that people are just there to love you just for who you are and that's it but they're connected to you more than that because they get to feel even what you're feeling well um it's been three years going for four so I can I could safely say I'm okay it's the mind that will never erase. It's the thought that would never erase out of my mind. But I'm fine. I'm, I've got on with life. Um, I, I, was, I was told that, you know what, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's always another beginning. So I could pretty much say that I am in my new beginning. I, I've met somebody. No names. No names. I've met somebody um, who's been in my life for, I will say months. I won't calculate them with year, but months. And so far, so good. The love is back. What can I say? Lady of Soul. This name uh, came uh, about, I think it was the first year when I started on radio. Well, I'd say the first probably month because um, it was always a, a matter of you can't go on radio and call yourself Debo. We have to have this, you know, name that identifies you. And for me, I could not understand what they meant. But um, through the few weeks that I had worked, a few days that I'd been working, they monitored on the type of music. So at that time, I wasn't told what kind of music to play. It was basically more of 
what do you like listening to what would you like to you know listen to as a playlist of yours so everything that i selected was more of like my kind of music that i would like um, which i was stuck in, in in the olden days so probably that's where the soul comes in from r&b which was current at that time you know your swvs your mary j blige's that was the time so i think with that kind of music and I was a calm person. I wasn't that loud at that <laughs> at that time. So I get the lady and the soul, and I was the only female um, uh, radio presenter at that time. So and the youngest. Yeah. So I, that's where the name comes from. My radio journey. Hmm. It started. I think it started off when I was doing my national service um, at that time called Tiralos Chaba. Um, I got assigned to uh, Radio Botswana, and with the, that assignment came were with working in the library library that's where the all the information was stored all your tapes all your books archives when it comes to the daily news believe it or not it is stored from the first print of daily news up until now when kutlano came as well so that's what i worked with mostly when i started off in radio but it wasn't a it wasn't a field that I thought I was going to take. Um, first, I thought I'd, I'd be more into fashion. Why? Don't ask me, please. But I thought I was going to be in fashion somehow. And um, yeah, so being in radio, when I finished my national service, I got a chance to audition for um, a program for Stan uh, Standard One. So even if you do get to listen to it right now, not be one. Um, that's my voice. It's been that long. But um, when I started first, I was in the marketing department. So I guess the running of the radio station I got used to. Then one day, um, uh, the guys that I worked with at that time, which were the only guys on radio, I'm talking about the likes of DJ Sid, I'm talking about Sammy T, uh, Fresh, you name them. Those were the uh, guys that I feel even now I'm so lucky to have worked with because without them and seeing the potential in me, I wouldn't probably be where I am right now. I'd probably be doing something else. So um, when I started, it was more like, no, give it a try, lady. You have the voice. Your voice is kind of like commanding. And I was thinking, huh? Me? Voice? But um, yeah, one thing led to another. I saw myself on my first day on, on radio, which was a bit nerve wracking, if I may put it like that, because um, when you get into this industry and you, you, you meet up with the guys like DJ Sid, DJ Fresh, you know, Sammy T, those are the big guys, the guys that you know when, when they're on radio, everybody's listening to you. And I've always had that thing at the back of my mind that who's ever going to listen to this woman right here? But I guess, you know, through the years, it's just taught me like, you know, every day is somebody who's listening out there. You never know. So yeah, an easy journey start off because I had those people to support me through and tell me the do's and don'ts of radio. And there's one thing that I always carry myself with, even up to, up to, up to now. Um, um, that's saying that radio can make you and it can break you. Basically what it means is it's don't, don't have that comfort in saying that you, you, you can do it. You, nobody can beat you, you know. There's always competition out there. You can come in tomorrow, you're gone. Um, what you have, you always have to be on your toes. You have to know what's happening around the world. You have to research. I mean, it's not like you're going to be a doctor or anything, but you always have to be um, in touch with what's happening in the world or in the country. So that's what it is. If you become too pompous, you might find yourself not in the limelight anymore. Who knows? Queen of co-hosts. You can say that again because I've had so many people that I've worked with in, in, in the morning show. But funny enough, I, I, I haven't been counting. Uh, but um, the secret, I don't even have a secret to it. Hey? I think at the end of the day, it, it involves your personality, how you treat others. And knowing that when you co-host, you're not the boss. There's two bosses right here, two individuals coming in with their different, um, I'd say, with different characters. My, my highlights uh, of my career at this present moment in time is I've, I've learned to be patient and through that patience um, comes a lot of honorary in terms of how people respect the, the job that you do and how you carry yourself. I've learned that when it comes to this kind of work, separate your personal life and the work that you do and you somehow that's what makes you carry through carry you through throughout the years that I've been on 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 radio and I would say when it comes to highlights there's so many if I can think of this there's, there's a lot of highlights that I have on radio mostly to do with uh, my listeners and uh, some to do with what I achieved at the end of the day or at the end of the month if somebody's going through a problem you know and they end up calling you saying well you know what what you just said just actually brought in light into my life there is a future after all this is not the end of the world some you know those are the most highs that I could pick out on radio but when it comes to lows 
when it comes to laws is you know your personal life and 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 radio or should i say media in itself everything ends up coming out in the open there and it's really hard you have to make sure that whatever you get to do at home when i leave the studio lady of souls lady of souls stays behind and when i go home that's the ball going home it's not never lady of soul you know when it comes to plans i think in life we should always have a plan in anything that you do you should always have backup you should always have uh, your second choice of what you you should do in case this falls off at the present moment i'm still on radio and probably will forever be i don't know for how long i don't want to say i'm going to retire like all the way in radio but one thing you should put in mind is that when it comes to radio it's my passion like my not somebody else's passion but my passion so it's not something that's going to I'm going to get rid of very easily I'll still remain on radio probably if I do get the chance to go on for the many years that I have to come but obviously at on the other hand I do have a couple of things up my sleeve uh, sleeves that I hope uh, by the end of this year when I look back I'll be like oh okay so you'll hear about them you'll see them probably so we'll see as it goes It's a countdown to our 50th birthday and uh, this meaning with Anna turning 50 to me personally um I was born 10 years yeah that gets to calculate how old I am I was born 10 years after our independence yes I just uh, celebrated my 40th birthday and um to me it's more of a jubilation because I'm still alive after those 40 years of having independence from the 10 I am still alive and still kicking. So it's more of a jubilation in that sense. And of course in in celebratory uh, mode that you know our country has gone through strives to be where it is right now. So I could fairly say, yeah, I'm jubilating with my family at the same time. I mean my country at the same time. I once brought a friend of mine over. She's Mexican, and uh, I told her, you know, I'm not going to take you to clubs and you know the high life society that you think it is. It's more of you coming to experience what Africa is and what Botswana is. Botswana, that's what she used to call it, Botswana. But I told her it was it's going to be more of you experiencing our country as it is. So when she came, um, yes, we did go clubbing, but not too much. I took her to uh, my. Um, um go hai go mo khumane a go bona dikhomo di pudi you know the feel and not forgetting um wildlife she did get to uh, get the opportunity to see wildlife it's unfortunate that we couldn't uh, fly um up north but a bit of south animals she did see mokorodi was also there so it's more of showing them what exactly we have that is so close to us in our paws that we 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 celebrate and say as a country we have because clubs will always be there you know the cuisine will always she loved mokorodi woo Mogodi was her everyday breakfast, lunch and dinner if if I may put it like that. So, yeah, that's more of what I would show to the person what we have as a country, not on what we have accomplished because I'm accomplished is always going to be there. The buildings, you name it, it's all going to be there, but where we come from is more important. The most significant thing in my life would be a big chunk but you know my bible um i never used to have one i must admit but uh, what i went through three and a half years ago said to me the book you need to have this and this is the reason why it is always by my side my bedside i read it every morning i read it every evening because i i feel there's some kind of positive energy that that happens when i read this um I went through a lot as much as anybody there could say that but we all gauge our own um uh trials and tribulations but without this I don't know even if I would have survived what I went through so this is my life this is my baby